Hello everyone, welcome back to Bits and Bob's Divination. My name is Caitlin and today we're going to be diving into three different piles here to see what is unfurling and unfolding within your life right now. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so welcome back kindred spirits and anyone new who may be joining us here on the channel today on this little corner of the internet. I appreciate having you guys here. Um, today we're going to be looking into, like I said, what is unfurling and unfolding in your life right now. Um, so this can be things that are currently happening right now, things that are going to happen throughout the next couple of months, lessons that you're integrating and things that you're learning and growing in along the way. These were really beautifully impactful piles. So I do hope that you check um, out more than one if they are calling to you more than one of them uh, and see how they unfurl for different reasons. But yeah, we're going to look into these here in a moment. But if you are interested in supporting this channel even further as well as supporting yourself through a reading that you can get a private reading right now, I have 2023, both digital and snail mail readings. Typically, I only do snail mail readings. So if you're interested in hopping into the new digital readings that I'm doing for a lowered price and at different tiers, then do feel free to check those all out down below. It really does support the channel and helps to keep this place running um, and is also really impactful for your next year or is useful and can give a lot of clarity into your year moving forward. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and look at these piles here, um, but do feel free to check all that out down below. So I decided to use different cards specifically from the Song of the Grandmothers, which we did a reading I think two weeks ago using this deck as well, um, and I'm finding that it's going to be probably one of my new favorites so I hope you guys are enjoying it as well but here we go so for pile number one we have grandmother time here and their word is surrender so that is pile number one for pile number two here we have grandmother lightning with the word burst um, and a little haiku down here that you can read through if you'd like but that is pile number two. And then last but not least here is group number three or pile number three with Grandmother Humpback Whale. And their message here is impact. So that is pile number three. So before you start heading off to your piles and running to the timestamps, um, I'm going to go ahead and give you a moment so that you can take a second here and connect with your intuition, ground here with me, and um, seek a little bit of clarity. So let's go ahead and take a deep cleansing breath here together now. And you're welcome to choose more than one of the piles here as I mentioned at the beginning you can choose more than one um, you can choose one decide it's not your thing flip-flop and change your mind there really is no right or wrong or any rules here all the timestamps will be down below in the description for you as well as in the chapter marks and you can also check out those 2023 um, New Year's readings if you're interested in those to support the channel and support yourself so all of that will be down below as well so we're going to go ahead and get started here with pile number one. Hello group one, if you've decided to choose grandmother time, then this is the pile for you. We're going to talk a lot more on this card and how it is unfurling for you and seeing all of the moving parts there. Because if we think about unfurling or unfolding something, right now we're looking to find the center. It kind of reminds me of that like Tootsie Pop commercial where it's like how many looks does it take to get to the center sort of situation and we don't want to bite in all at once. So I want to look from this, this starting point and look at it and then see all the way into the root. What is unfolding so we can see the center of the energy that's surrounding you right now. So we'll be starting obviously with grandmother time here, but we're going to be playing around with several different things. We're not going to play too much into the charm side of this. So if you're interested in more charm reading things, you can check out last week's reading or previous readings on the channel. But today we're going to have heavily focus on Oracle and a little bit of tarot today. But to start us off, let's just start right into Grandmother Time um, and read what she has to say first on the card as well as in the guidebook because this is a, a new deck to me. It's the Song of the Grandmother's deck and it has so many heavy 
gentle, compassionate, and beautiful layers to it. So I think it's really important that we check those out and see what the guidebook has to say. Because as I've mentioned, um, guidebooks just really get a lot of bad rep, but they actually have a lot to, to teach us. So um, that's the reason why they're there. So we should use them as the tools that they are. But anyways, it does say here, Grandmother Time, and it showcases the word surrender. Return to the now. This moment influences past, present, and future. And you can see sort of a ripple effect that's happening here, which is reminding me of that idea of us like moving to the center to see what's sort of creating this surrender, dropping the stone into the water and knowing that you maybe can't pick it back up, you can't take it back. Sort of like time showcases, you know, that once something has been said, once something has been done, yes, we can work to try to maybe undo it, but for the most part, it still has happened, right? So I want to see how that is influencing you right now with grandmother time and do that with the guidebook. So she says, or, or they say here, grandmother time, surrender. Invisible grandmother time is revealed through a stone recently dropped into the lake. The stone's impact expands in all directions, illustrating the import of your present. Not only does this moment cause ripples outward, but it also affects the sky above in the mirror image, the mountain, the mirror image of the mountains through their reflection in the water surface. Every moment contains infinite power. Grandmother time counsels suspension in the space between what has been and what will be. We tend to neuter the power of the now by focusing on fixing the past or controlling the future. But what if our perception of time is at time as linear is only a construct we've created to help us order and make sense of this reality. What can you learn and understand if you accept that you are in the right place and time to have the experiences you wanted in this lifetime? Grandmother time challenges you to explore the idea of simultaneous, simultaneous time where the past, present, and future coexist. If each moment holds the infinite possibilities implied by such a cosmic metal melding, can you begin to see the ripple effect in all directions of what you choose right now? And this is specifically from this grandmother. Harness this power, surrender any judgment of the past or anxiety about the future. Live right now as if you exist in the reality of your choice because after all you do. Whatever you heal, forgive, or empower floods backwards and forwards. Return to the now. This moment influences past, present, future. Very <laughs> impactful. Wow. Grandmother time has a lot to teach us. I love the idea that the guidebook was showcasing to us and the idea of like both the ripples being showcased, yes, on the ground and, and being showcased in the water here, um, but also those showcasing in the ripples above, as well as rippling the image that we see. Um, so yes, the things that we do can also make ripples on the image of something that can be in our reality. So our past can make a ripple on our, per our current situation, right? We look, if we're looking to the past, um, it has ripples in it from, from our past, so we're looking almost through a mirror that has all these ripples, all these ripple effects. And so for you right now, maybe you're having a moment where you're reflecting to the past, you're currently trying to maybe influence the now, and you're also having a lot to think about in the future, and how can you integrate all of those for your own growth, for your own healing, and for your own present moment. So I want to see more as well, right? We're going to unfurl this a little bit further and pull a couple of tarot cards here. I don't want to overcomplicate the reading, so we're going to try to keep it quite simple. But do feel free to send your energy in here through time and space, thinking of the camera sort of as a portal here for us. It really does make a difference. Also, the, the card number here is 44, in case that resonates for anyone. So we have Justice showing up here. Let's see what else kind of has a similar rippling idea. Um, justice has a lot to do with consequences to our actions, that ripple effect. So it makes sense that justice would show up here. Let's see what else is unfolding for you. We also have the Ace of Inspiration. And both of these images showcase sort of 
um, something coming out from the center of like this face here, right? So you have sort of the ripples showing up here, the little bubbles from the surface, sort of looking in the mirror of that water and seeing something ripple and using it as inspiration. So something from your past helping to influence your future in terms of a new idea that you're very passionate about. The Ace of Inspiration and any Ace showcases a possibility for something new to grow, sort of a seed, the very, very beginnings, the little kindling to get the fire going. So this is the very beginning kindlings of something. Right now you're at a moment in time that is really like fertile for something new to grow, but you have to use both the ideas of the past and what it could be to influence that present moment, right? We can't be too far in the future or looking too far in the past for that to skew the scales and make this a little bit more difficult for that to happen and unfurl because we do have justice here showcasing that same sort of unfurling, 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 and the seed slowly growing. Um, so there is an idea that you want to plant, but you want to plant it outside of your mind, right? And actually make the, the action happen. Um, which can be really difficult, right? Sometimes we have a dream, an idea that we can sort of gaze upon forever in this this little pond, right? Or this river or lake, whatever it is. Um, and we can gaze at it and gaze at it and gaze at it and hoping that it'll keep changing, hoping that we actually do something about it, right? Um, I've definitely been in this this sort of situation as well where there is a new idea, there is something, the timing is right, everything is going in the right direction and yet sort of the idea that we even have the opportunity to to put the the rock in the pond is what is holding us back it's almost like we're we're more afraid that everything is lining up for us than we are to make something happen right sometimes by having challenges in our path by having it's almost feels too good to be true is basically what I'm getting up to um, is it feels like maybe the timing right now feels too good to be true like in your past you might have had situations where you um, wanted something to happen and, and you kept having a roadblock kept having a roadblock kept having a roadblock and now that things feel so aligned it feels almost scary to just be so free floating in that space so that's what I'm really getting here so far from your two cards, but I want to look further as well. So I'm going to pull some of the um, cards here from this deck from the Threadbound Oracle. What else is coming through and unfurling and unfolding for you? Group one. Group one. What else is unfurling? So you've got two cards so far with the protagonist and the dance card. Love that you've got the protagonist card. That's a beautiful one. And it showcases more of those ripples. Actually, both of these cards do. Very interesting. And then I was also feeling this card here that was sitting towards the top. So, okay. All right. So yeah, like I said, in general, every single card you've had here showcase other than this one showcase these ripples you have a ripple and circles coming in ripples and circles coming in as well as out you have two cards here showcasing all these beautiful ripples and unfoldings um, in both of these cards behind these characters and then the one card sitting at the middle of everything has no ripples nothing moving and it's stuck in the idea of the five of thread which is the needle pain shock and trauma and there's these little, um, it, it kind of looks like thread, right? But it also reminds me of like, um, uh, like a spider, uh, what are they called? Webs, right? They're like little spider webs kind of holding these in place. So it's very fragile, very easy to whisk away um, from, from people from the outside. But I know for you that this is, um, whenever we have our own traumas, our own personal pain, a shock to the system, that can cause that freeze or fight or flight situation that is a really important instinct for us, right? But it does showcase again that like you've come across the situation before where you have this new idea, this new passion, something you've been dreaming, this main character energy that's coming in where it's like, yes, I can do this. I want this. I'm feeling empowered. And then something blocks it. Something puts a shock to the system, um, whether it's something that still is in the past that's kind of holding you back, still chaining you back with that spider web, um, or something that you're, you're worried about that's anxiety in the future. 
um, or even something that happens just in the moment that is a shock to the system. But regardless, it's continuing to affect and create ripples on all of this that you're trying to grow and unfurl. Um, And this is, you know, fair, right? Like, that's fair. You can look at all this beautiful potential and it's really easy to see that kind of ripple and bleed into the rest of it. But right now it's showcasing that there is an open opportunity, open land, open space for this to happen. Um, And yes, you can take it, you can leave it, you can do whatever you want with it. It's up to you at the end of the day. But it is being showcased that you have, there's a lot of, there's not as much in your path as there once used to be and that this is a much more opportune time for you um, to heal and I forgot to mention as well that this is a possibilities grandmother which is represented by the purple here also represented by um, spirit speaking to us and it says here embracing portals of opportunity and expansion that open as you integrate lessons. So in that idea, that represents that right now you have you have a lot of lessons you've been learning from those past experiences, from that past trauma, that pain, that shock that you've gone through, those um, needles to the system. And I'm almost feeling, and I, I've mentioned this before, but there's like this acupuncture kind of feeling, right? That release and the relief to maybe try to dip your toes, to throw the stone into the lake And find that just, you know, everything falls silent. Nothing's in the way. And there's a bit of relief that could come from that. But it won't happen until you kind of leap into it. Like we also have here with the dance. It says here, trust, body, and catharsis. So there is this feeling of also trusting in that you know the way, that you have the, the abilities already in you to move forward but also that there's there's definitely a feeling that like spirit is is here as well or your or even like um ancestors mythology culture behind you to kind of back you up here to kind of have as a foundation to hold you up um maybe that's where that past element is coming through to kind of help create this new idea to come to fruition um to actually put that in the pond because it does seem like they're kind of like dancing and helping behind the scenes um I get that from like uh the stars and the idea of like um maybe Polynesian culture and I'm also getting like this feeling as well with the the like Stonehenge feelings that's why it's giving me like these cultural feelings right um that somebody has a foundation behind you there's a lot of wisdom as well through time for you to unfurl that maybe will give you the uh, strength and understanding and wisdom as well to to help you walk forward to throw that that stone in the pond where maybe once an ancestor of yours never had the chance to Um, so there's something unfurling there and then we have main character energy happening here as well with the protagonist the protagonist representing a main character in a story Uh, curiosity drive and motive so whenever we have the main character right the main character usually always um Not always, but it tends to always have to, yes, go through challenges, but they tend to have a lot of character growth in the end. And it also is a reminder to um, be the main character of your own story, right? We don't want to be the side character. We don't want to be the one in the background that you don't even remember their name by the end of the book, right? You are the main character of your own story. So you're making an impact by every step you take. And goodness, I just realized there's also these little spirals and swirls happening up here on the ceiling as well, which is giving me again more of that unfurling energy. Um, I also get more of that unfurling, maybe a library of old um, wisdom and books from people that came before you. I definitely see a lot of, of wisdom coming from your own personal culture, diving into that, the mythology behind that Um there's something there, right? So reconnecting with either your past culture, your current culture, and that's influencing a lot of your past, present, and future right now when it comes to these ideas. So I want to end with one final card here, and I know a lot of people aren't like super into angels and that more religious side of angels, but I find that this deck just has really beautiful messages if you look past some of the religious elements. Um, So if that's not your thing, you don't have to listen to this card at all, but I just wanted to see what's coming through for you as advice from maybe your, your loved ones, from beyond the veil, from culture, from 
uh, ancestral roots and things like that. So I want to see any advice coming through here for those here in group one with grandmother time, this influence to surrender to the moment, to time. So we have the angel of purification. I bathe myself in the light of my soul every day. And you're welcome to read through this if you'd like to. But I'm going to read it as well. Here's the image. Um, it reminds me of like uh, like being by the beach. I've never been to like the ocean. But it reminds me of scenes I've seen of people being at the beach. And then having to like kind of uh, take a shower afterwards. Like that outdoor shower. So I do see sort of like a purification as well. That like once you've done it. Once you've thrown the stone into the 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 water. And make those ripples. That it's like turn off your phone read a book, take some time away for a minute, just see it and have it happen behind the scenes, you know, kind of rinse it off from you, don't try to overthink it or um, kind of get yourself sucked into it too hard, like just throw the stone, walk away, see what happens, get curious about it. Um, so anyways, it says here, when we open our hearts and minds to our inner sun, we are fully purified by the radiance of its loving light. All that keeps the memory of negativity is cleansed, and in the way we purify both mind and body. Visualize now the light of your soul filling your entire being and purifying every cell and atom as it radiates to everything around you. So... That is your final message here, is just purification, kind of allowing yourself to um, almost lift, reset, and realign yourself is the words that I'm really getting here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and leave you with that. That's what's really unfurling right now for you, is that you have a new idea of something you want to plop into this, and you want to throw into throw your stone in, put your best foot forward on something of a new idea that you're very passionate very driven by and very motivated by that's about something that feels very main ca character energy for you isn't about someone else but it's very much about you that you're maybe feeling kind of held back by by either past trauma or shock to the system or just that you had a lot of roadblocks with it in the past but there seems to be somebody purifying it and kind of helping you along in the background right now within your ancestral roots and within loved ones beyond the veil and things like that or your personal culture that by connecting back to you can find a lot of healing integrate those lessons for to help you move this forward so I do hope this was useful to you moving forward. If it was, do be sure to give this video a like and let me know in the comments down below. I'm always interested in your guys' thoughts. I've been trying out different types of readings and playing around with different ways to showcase the messages to you. So feedback is always really useful and helpful. And you're also welcome to subscribe to this little community we have here on this little corner of the internet. I'd love to have you here as I put out new readings every single Monday for love, career, spirituality, your personal empowerment, for journaling, art magic, and so many other things. So do feel free to subscribe if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, I'd love to have you here. And also, you are welcome to check out the different offerings I have out right now. Right now, I have 2023 readings, both digital and private readings through snail mail uh, that you can check out if you're interested. I typically only do snail mail readings for my private readings, but right now I'm offering digital readings right now through email and uh, DM from Instagram. So if you are interested, do feel free to check those out. It's only going to be till the end of January, and then I'm going to be opening up some new readings for uh, like more love readings for February and relationship readings. So if you want to hop on those, do feel free to check those out. It really helps to support this channel and to keep this space running. So do feel free to. And yeah, I hope to see you in the next one. Bye. Hello group two. If you've decided to choose grandmother lightning, then this is the pile for you. We're going to talk more about this specific card here in a moment. Um, as I had mentioned with pile number one and in the intro, today we are going to be talking about what it is that you are currently unfolding and unfurling, thinking of it as a shell and we're going back in time or unfurling deeper and deeper towards the center, the root of something, the foundation of something that is showing up right now for you around the idea of grandmother lightning with burst here and um, you can see it as like getting deeper to the point or you can see it as like I had mentioned that it reminds me of like that 
Tootsie Pop commercial where it's like how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop and then they just like break right into the center. So we're going to try to unfurl it back a little bit more slowly, take our time with it versus just like crunch right into the middle um, and see what's unfurling. So the first start of it all is Grandmother Lightning here, but we're going to look deeper with other different tools here today, which I'll have all listed down below. But starting off here with Grandmother Lightning, you chose Grandmother Lightning, which is the main word of burst. And it says here, brilliant, striking flash, illuminating, illuminating bolt brings sudden clarity right? So this is all about really intense clarity. If you guys have ever seen lightning, which I'm sure a, a large majority of us have, right? Um, it is like a burst. It is a flash. It is that electric pulse. Um, it is also what, you know, is at that electric feeling, right? Rushing from our brain to our, our nerves and like, um, our spinal cord and that very like intense, um, almost instinctual feeling. So that's what I'm getting here just from the start of this, that burst, that realization, that sudden clarity, that flash of light um, that you have to kind of hold on to, right? Whenever you see a flash of lightning, it's like in and out quick and, and fast. It's like one of those things that you need to write down or like a dream that just disintegrates within seconds of waking up. Right. So these realizations, this clarity, yes, can be sudden, but it's really easy also to forget or to let go of. Um, quite easily too. So I want to see what the guidebook has to say because I feel like guidebooks get such a bad rep and so I like to showcase to you guys that the guidebooks can be really helpful tools for you. So if you are reading for yourself, never feel bad about using a guidebook. They're there for a reason. They're a tool for us to use. So always feel welcome to use your own guidebook with things. And I've just recently got this deck so I think it's appropriate for me to use the guidebook just to see what is showing up here. Um, and they're made for a reason, so we're going to be looking at Grandmother Lightning here with Burst. And this is specifically from the Destruction suit of this uh, deck, so it has different suits. And this one is Destruction, Accepting Natural Forces of Change with Less Fear and More Trust. So we're going to see what shows up here with the guidebook. So, let's read. So it says here, Grandmother Lightning Burst. Grandmother Lightning knows how to make an entrance. Her arrival interrupts the deep plume, nearly black sky as she shoots through the clouds, daring and insistent. Around her, the storm continues unabated as the air currents dance in stomach dropping swoops. When the situation on your mind feels chaotic, vague or unclear, welcome the burst of light filled clarity Grandma Grandmother Lightning always brings. Be forewarned though, she won't wait for you to ask. <laughs> Her timing is unannounced, always impeccable, and ultimately for your benefit. Aha! Did you see me? Just there? Here I come again, with a crackle and a pop and a jolt of light. Perhaps a warning of thunder to follow. You may know my sister who rumbles and growls and doesn't take no for an answer. Or maybe it is the very shape of me you need to see. Electric in the air as I tear the sky as I tear the sky, temporarily destroying darkness, to reveal new shapes. Do they show you how your puzzle fits together? Watch and wait for me. When your senses need a shock of illumination, I will be there. It only takes an instant to know what you didn't know before. Find me in the beautiful divide. Brilliant, striking flash, illuminating bolt brings sudden clarity. So even though it is one of the Destruction Grandmothers, it does have such a beautiful energy to it as well. It's a very, that intense realization. I loved how it was like, maybe you aren't asking for this realization, but it always tends to hit us when we aren't asking for it, right? Realizations can happen by just a bus going by and an ad that was on it, or something as simple as just turning around and seeing someone that reminds you of something, right? It can be quick. It can be a flash. It can be easy to forget, and sometimes also something that's very impactful and long-lasting, so we're going to see what's coming through with you and the idea of this burst in this ideal of realization and clarity using a little bit of tarot here. So let's unfurl this a little bit further. What is unfolding? Do you feel free to send your energy in? By the way, the number for this card is 61 in case that resonates for anyone. Six representing harmony, one representing a new idea or a burst of clarity. So again, they were talking that burst of clarity being something that can ultimately be for your benefit. 
So let's see what else is showing up here. What is unfurling? So you have the Ten of Voices. All right, that is a very sudden change, the Ten of Voices is. Okay, and then we also have a very different card of the Knight of Materials. Okay, so we have something that was going very steady, that has been going very steady, very slow, very calculated, very thoughtful, very um, meticulous in the idea of the Knight of Materials. The Knight of Materials is the, the knight that gets their chores done, goes through their to-do to do list, writes everything in their planner, cleans the house, makes sure this is all done and right. They don't always do it perfectly, but they do take their time. They're really good with their time and their their tools in their pocket to make things happen. And then right next to it, you have that really sudden burst of the Ten of Voices showing up and unfurling here. It almost looks like glass sort of piercing through them, right? So I don't feel like this realization is necessarily, again, something to harm you or hurt you, but I do feel like this sudden clarity, this shift, this change in the energy, the change in your personal viewpoint that happens quite suddenly is going to kind of mess with your plans. It's going to mess with your routine, your clarity that you've already kind of structured in. Um, and that's sort of what's unfurling here. Again, ultimately for your benefit, so I want to look a little bit further, right? Because this is already, just in general, this reading feels very quick and fast and like, I just feel like the cards need to like fly out. So let's see what else there is. So do feel free to send your energy in through time and space here. Group two, what else is coming in around this 10 of voices? Oh, okay. So we have the five of ink, solvent, mistakes, forgiveness, mercy. So maybe it's something that happened that was kind of a misstep, right? The the night of materials isn't perfect, right? <laughs> they they do still mess up. They still have mistakes. They still do things a little bit imperfectly, um, even when they're trying to keep this perfectionism in check, right? So there is this feeling of keeping perfectionism in check, kind of um, writing things, saying things very calculated, very perfect, very precise, um, that uh, kind of erase any of the Im impractical or um, even personal parts of yourself, right? Um, it's reminding me of like people who would write, uh, that don't write in their personal handwriting, but rather write in this like, uh, not necessarily calligraphy, but uh, like the look up a font and write specifically in that beautiful font. And it takes away some of the personality, takes away that imperfection that right, makes you you. And so I'm getting that here from the five of ink with solvent, mistakes, forgiveness, and mercy. So you're allowed to make mistakes and maybe that's part of your realization and what you're learning and unfurling right now for you personally and your personal growth is that this perfectionism that you've built up or this foundation that you've been building maybe once started really healthy and useful to you but has now become sort of either a crutch or something that you have to kind of live up to. It reminds me of like a, a trophy you're continuing to build upon and you don't ever want to see someone see you fall down, um, right? So it feels like it's almost like you're kind of just putting a lot of pressure or a lot of outside pressure is now built because of this, right? You don't want to let someone down or you don't want to let anyone see a crack in the sky, right? Let's see what else they're showing up here for you, group two. Group two. Okay, so we have the companion. That's really lovely. Okay, what else? Group two. One more card, please. Not sure which one flipped. One more card. Group two here. Do feel free to send your energy in through time and space. Okay, yeah, I was feeling that with the mountain, right? You're not really plateauing. I feel like you're just going up and up and up and up and up, and it's like just too much. <laughs> it just feels like a lot. It feels overwhelming. Um, so I, I definitely empathize with you all. Um, so we have the mountain, challenges, adversity, endurance, right? Having to keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. Uh, and it feels like it's building almost like a, uh, like a hidden volcano, right? It was a mountain. It started as a mountain, but it's building on the inside with either... I can feel that like sometimes keeping that perfectionism can cause resentment from others, right? Because you're having to give and give and give or 
do something for other people's benefit, right? Because you're not being able to have your own personal personality, identity, and ideas come through, um, but rather what somebody else maybe needs from you, especially since we have the companion here with um, partnership, support, and reliability. Ooh, reliability. The, the night of... Um, the night of materials, as great as they can be, uh, yes, they're very reliable. They're very loyal, almost sometimes to a fault. And I feel like right now you're going through that realization of realizing that you're worth more than that or you're worth more than this companion is kind of putting this pressure on you. And I feel like these two are definitely connected because if you look at these like circles, right, they're, they're showing up in both cards. So I feel like you're also really good at... Uh, maybe that's why the resentment is building because it represents like a lack of communication or understanding from another person because they either one never got told that you're feeling this way or um, there's like a hidden element to it but yeah I just am getting this feeling that like they just don't they don't see it. You see it. You see that it's becoming a challenge and it's becoming really big, but they aren't, they don't have the same realization. They're not noticing it as, as much. So I do see a need for boundaries, um, new boundaries to be drawn and, and to be communicated here needs to be communicated, communicated as in your personal needs needing to be more important. We even have here, um, like the idea of like yes you're you're building something with that rose and and that feeling but even in the um the night of materials they have this rose here right and i feel like you're you're showing this part of yourself but i feel like you can still be a companion to someone to have partnership with someone to still be a reliable loyal person but still also have your little spikes right you're allowed to one have your mistakes and you're also allowed to um have boundaries, right? Have the thorns around as well to protect you from those who kind of steal um, your time and your energy for their own benefit and don't really give you near as much back or have an understanding of and seeing how much you are, are a rock to them, right? Sometimes it's nice to be told that you're seen, to be thanked, to be appreciated. And I think that's completely fair. And I see that you feel maybe erased you're not feeling as seen as you could. And a lot of this comes down to that communication and needing that realization, that burst. Because it's definitely building within this volcano. There's anger and resentment building below the surface. So that's something to be aware of. Um, and that sometimes we, we don't take notice of for quite a while. I kind of feel called to pull you one more card here, one for advice and then also another card of advice from spirit. So what is advice from this deck here for you? Okay, so we have the two of thread twine. That totally makes sense. Um, the two of thread twine says agreement, symbiosis, and compromise. And when you think of twine, twine, if you aren't aware of like <laughs> that crafty side, um, Basically, twine only has two threads mixed together. It's not like yarn where there's a lot of threads or more than one or more than two, but it's only two threads threaded together. Um, and so when one thread ends up being tighter than the other or being pulled a little bit tighter in the machine or hand hand twined together, it causes um, the thread to have weird bumps and, and to have strange a strange look to it. It's not near as uniform or as compromised or as um, much of a partnership. So when I look at this card, it's showcasing that there is an availability for you to have compromise, to have a partnership here, but it does represent a need for an agreement, real terms to be put out, not necessarily legal terms, but you do need like to communicate, to set those boundaries and have them either in writing or, or something you can do on the regular Something that has more structure to it that would be useful for you, especially since you seem to really enjoy structure, but also for them to understand your needs here that aren't being necessarily met and are being strained um, in the relationship or in a relationship. This could be a relationship with yourself as well um, as a reminder here, but that's what I'm getting here with symbiosis as well and the idea of twine. But I'm going to pull you one final card here from this um, deck with angels and, and other things. It's kind of a more religious deck. It does showcase God and things. So if that can be triggering or not as useful for you or um, anything like that, do feel free to ignore this message. But I do know a lot of you find this to be a really helpful and useful deck for you. And I also know that 
it doesn't come out very often where it wants to be a part of these readings, so I really felt called to it here today. So we're going to see what shows up. You're welcome to just take the main message at the top. But let's see, group two here. What do you have coming in here, group two? Group two, group two, for a message from spirit here. Your personal guides, the universe. Okay, yeah, the angel of understanding, or just the idea of, of the idea of the oracle message of understanding. You're welcome to read through this, but we're going to read through it together. Here is the, it looks like a really symbiotic partnership showing up here of two equals, right? So I see that showing up. Goodness, I'm like out of breath with you guys. There's so much I want to try to fit in. Um, just been talking so quickly, probably because that lightning burst feeling. But anyways, let's let's read what it says here together. I understand all and everything because I exercise the understanding of myself. Wow, that was really powerful. I understand all and everything because I exercise the understanding of myself. And so this burst of lightning really starts with the understanding of yourself, right? Um, no one else can understand your needs if you don't enlighten them to yourself. Uh, when we understand who we really are, a full transformation happens in our lives. In the luminosity of the soul, we understand that true knowledge comes from within our, ourselves and transformed into the real experience of learning. Wow, that feels so aligned with what we've been talking about. The idea of allowing other people to to better understand you by you having a better understanding of yourself and the only way for that to happen is to deconstruct um, this perception of you being this perfect um, sort of well-rounded loyal at all the good things person without any faults without any cracks in the surface and I think you showing more of your cracks showing more of your needs to not only yourself but then later to others and having that as a mirror to yourself, as clarity to almost unshackle what you've built here in this twine can be really impactful. And it helps others to see you without um, so much resentment to build up because of that being seen, feeling, and understanding, and compassion. So yeah, those are all of the thoughts and feels I have on your cards here today. If you found this useful for unfurling your do path, do feel free to give this video a like. You can also let me know in the comments down below how it resonated for you. I always find that really useful, especially since I've been playing around with different formats with these readings. So I really appreciate any f feedback. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, you also can subscribe to this little corner on the internet. I really appreciate any uh, support there. And also, I just love doing these readings for you every single Monday. So if you want to subscribe and see those, do feel free to. You can also hit the notification bell to stay updated and get a notification every time I post uh, so you don't miss out on these readings. And yeah, you also can support this channel if you want to as well with the Kindred Tip Jar down below, but also through the 2020 three, oh my gosh, so crazy, 2023 New Year's readings uh, for you to join in on. I have digital and snail mail reading options for you. I typically only do snail mail readings, so if you've always wanted a lower price and a um, digital reading, do feel free to check those out down below as well. Uh, it helps the channel and it can help you to navigate the new year with more empowerment, understanding, and clarity, so do feel free to check those out down below. And I hope you enjoyed, and I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next pile, wishing you the best of luck, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Hello group three! If you've decided to choose the card of Humpback Whale with impact, then this is the pile for you. We're going to be talking more on this whale here in a moment, and if I sound out of breath, pile number two really took my breath away, like in terms of literally just was talking so quickly. So I'm going to try to slow down here with your guys' pile um, and see what is unfurling for you. So when I'm thinking about unfurling or unfolding something, right, we're taking something that was all folded together nice and neat and we're trying to get to the center of it. We're trying to unfold 
unfurl it and understand it from multiple points of view. So for you, that's coming from the idea and starting at the root of impact. And we're going to see what unfurls for you. It reminds me, and I mentioned this in the last two piles, um, it reminds me of like a the uh, Tootsie Roll or Tootsie Pop commercial with that little owl. And they're like, how many licks does it take to get to the middle of a Tootsie Pop? And then they just like bite right into it. And so what we're trying to do is avoid biting right into it, right? We're going to take this slowly and unfurl it slowly so that it is more inf- impactful and useful to you. So we're going to be doing that with several different things here today, um, but we're going to talk first about this humpback whale and we're going to be diving into the guidebook because I like to showcase to you guys that um, for me, this is a new deck to me and I think that it's really important for a lot of you to understand that if you get a new deck, if you're interested in learning and growing in your own tarot or oracle journey, that guidebooks are amazing tools and I feel like a lot of the time they get such a bad rep for being a bit of a crutch or not really listening to your own intuition, but sometimes they can be these beautiful tools to kind of um, unfurl our own intuition. So we're going to be diving into that here again today with this deck from the Song of the Grandmother. So let's look first at the card and just see what we're really getting here. I've always loved that this card has this mirror image and how like what they're doing here in the water is still impacting and or is influenced and, and connected. There's like this connection, this deep connection, almost a spiritual connection with everything around them right? And seeing it reflected in many different places. So anyway, we have Grandmother Humpback Whale Impact, and it says here, Majestic tune-up, your vibration travels far when you sing love's song. Um, We also have the number 47, in case that resonates with anyone. Um, For being a number of foundation and security and understanding, and seven being more about identity, contemplation, and learning in that space. So I want to see how that resonates here with what it says here in the guidebook. So here we go. Number 47, Grandmother Humpback Whale, Impact. At night, the ocean is as dark as a galaxy, camouflaging even the grand, magnificent bulk of Grandmother Humpback Whale. Her swim itself releases an otherworldly haunting refrain into the water all around her. Music of motion visible to us in misty, sparkly color. Above her, the Milky Way echoes and reflects her shape, conveying her inspirational essence even to those far, far away. Her migration route is the longest of any mammal, typically thousands of miles each year, as she services the energy grid lines of the Earth. To be sure, her vocalization of sound is not to be the whale sound you might be familiar with, but from her male counterpart. Yet Grandmother Humpback Whale conveys conveys a certain melody nonetheless, simply through her presence alone, and she is no less influential. So this is specifically from Grandmother uh, Humpback Whale here. My song is one to feel in your heart, not with your ears. Won't you sing with me? Tune into the vibration of love and let it move through you every time. Love travels farther and more powerfully even than me. It ripples outwards, servicing others more than you may have ever known. Imagine yourself as large and sleek and solid as I am, slicing through the water with ease. I'm happy to swing, swim alongside you for inspiration any time, dearest. Majestic tune-up, your vibration travels far when you sing love's song. Wow, I love this. So it's not the idea of like what I was first getting from this is the idea of impact and like what you put your time into can create an impact or that like what you do creates an impact in like a lot of the superficial ways that we think about it but rather just your general presence just you being yourself as authentic as you can be in any moment is creating an impact right have you ever come across somebody who just like put a smile on your face so simply just in the grocery store you don't even know their name you don't know who they are but something simple that they said the energy that they brought to the to the world created an impact for you and it might be something you remember years and years and years down the line right and they don't know the impact that they're making they're just being themselves and so I see this idea that you yourself 
um, don't see it, right? The humpback whale doesn't see what impact they're making, but it is making an impact. So you just being alive, being yourself, being who you are is creating an impact to those around you and hopefully a positive one, right? Most of the time, I think it is a positive one. And a lot of the time, we don't realize the impact that we make by just being ourselves. So that's what I'm really getting here is that more spiritual element that I was talking about in the beginning, that it's more of this like um, loose uh, sort of ethereal thing. But of course, we're here to unfurl a little bit more. So we're going to go ahead and pull two cards here from some tarot messages. So again, the number 47 showing up here. Um, as well as here with you guys with group three, three being a very collaborative community sort of number. So I find it interesting that you, that this um, fell towards group three. But do feel free to send your energy in through time and space. It really does make an impact and a difference on these readings, especially since they're so, um, for so many people, bringing your own personal essence is important. So we have the two of inspiration. That's really interesting, sort of a lookout point, um, more of that stargazing energy that we're seeing here with the stars and this telescope. So there is something too that maybe someone else has been very influential and has created a really big impact for you. Um, again, it could be someone as simple as in the grocery store, maybe someone you watch online, um, maybe it is a skill or someone who has a specific skill, or maybe it's someone way back in history that's been really influencing you, mythology, culture. Um, ideas, things like that, that are showing up here and creating an impact in your own life um, that you're starting to put more focus into and has helped you think that you have more of a possibility as well to shoot among the same stars they are. Interesting. Let's see what else there is here for you. And there's also like a diversion of energy, right? The these These lines are going a different direction than the lines here within here. Um, within the circle uh, with the telescope. So I really do see that you're also carving a new space for yourself and you're maybe being influenced and impacted by someone who you look up to that has given you the, the power to kind of change direction. Interesting. Let's see what else there is. Group three. And we also have the page of voices. Love that. The page of voices even has this galaxy above them that they're sort of dancing around in. Um, so you can see there's like this galactic shape above them, um, a whole in, uh, introspective galaxy in which you're dancing within your mind within. Uh, it can be dancing in like a, a really fun way. It also can be that we overcomplicate and overlook the thing a little and make it too big within our mind to sometimes hold. But with the Page of Voices, I don't really get that. The Page of Voices has a lot of enthusiasm, curiosity, a lot of playful energy that comes through. So I do see that right now what is unfurling is that the impact that you are making on others is helping others to think that they can look outside the box in their mind to open themselves to more uh, a bigger field of stars and galaxies and things that they can shoot themselves towards, um, right? Shoot for the moon, and if you miss, you're among the stars, right? So they're they're trying something new, or you're being influenced by someone as well that's creating a really big impact for you. And it could even be a cycle, right? Sometimes I'll talk about the people who have influenced me to start this channel, and then my me starting this channel that's influenced someone else to do the same, and right, it can be also a continued effect that that continues to happen there as well you know, slowly building these mountains. So I want to look a little bit further because those are, that's what I'm really getting here from your first two cards, but let's unfurl more of the story here with some oracle messages. I was feeling super called to this deck today um, with the uh, Threadbound Oracle. It has such a charm and interest. I'm feeling this back card here. So we have the Ace of Ink Pigment. This actually came out recently in a different reading, so be interested to know in the comments if you had this one as well. But it says the Ace of Ink Pigment, Alchemy, Process, and Experimentation. And this is all about just putting things together and trying something. It's about getting curious to see what would happen. It's kind of like when you're in your seventh grade science class and you, you try this together and you try this together and you try this together and one of them creates an explosion, one of them creates something really lovely, one creates this weird looking slime, right? We're just experimenting to see what would happen. And I almost see like a sunrise as well showing up here in the center. 
Uh, so a sunrise, something on the horizon for you, something starting to show up in the sky as these stars appear. Interesting. Let's see a little bit further. I want to see more about this Ace of Ink. Aces also represent potential for a new beginning as well. And the two of inspiration is the very start of a new beginning. So I do see a lot of you, well, I mean, we are at the beginning of a new year, but it could be something unrelated to that that is um, now in your vision because someone has really inspired you to create something new, to create a new path for yourself. We also have the three of thread knot, promises, bonds, and remembrance. So it could be someone really close to you as well. Maybe a childhood best friend just came through or someone new, a new friend that you've recently acquired and, and found that has really inspired you as well in ways you hadn't expected. Hmm. Let's see what else. There's also a bit of like a forget-me-not showing up here as well, like the idea of forget-me-nots um, do represent like promises and bonds, but it also is reminding me of like uh, like bonds with those um, who have passed as well, like to not forget them or old memories of someone who used to be in your life who's just reminded you or kickstarted you. So it could be someone from childhood that you are now friends with since that are creating a really big impact. Um, maybe someone you didn't really talk to then, but now you do. Let's see. One more card here. Group three. Do feel free to send your energy in. re, -re -hone in here. Okay. And of course, you got the stars. Yes, I felt so called to the stars, this galactic shoot for the stars. We have a telescope, we have the stars in the sky, we have a galaxy showing up here, um, we have clouds and so many other things. And so then the stars are showing up here with luck, hope, and wishes. So what is unfurling right now is the idea that you're taking things that you've learned from, from actual stars and celebrities in that way, um, but also just bringing it back down to earth, things that you've learned, things you took from Pinterest, that one thing you heard from your mom, that person from the grocery store, threading them all together, this beautiful star map that you've created, this inspirational map, and threading it into your life somehow, taking that and using it as potential and possibility um, to grow something new, especially since you have something new on the horizon for you. Uh, and that's showing up here with luck, hope, and wishes. So I'm already really loving the cards that you have showing up here. Um, I don't want to mess with it too much here. I feel like this is the amount you were meant to have. But I do want to end with one more card here. And this is going to be from this angel deck. Um, what is it called? The angel meditations? Yes, the angel meditations deck. I don't tend to pull this one out very often because it does sometimes have more religious connotations, especially with angels and things. But I feel like it's one of the the least amount that you can get with an angel deck. Uh, but for whatever reason, it was so calling to be a part of this reading. So I had to bring it out for you all today. So if that's not your thing, that's okay. You can ignore this message and, and move on through the rest of the reading. But uh, if you are interested, let's see what's coming through from your spirit team. You're welcome to change any of the, the vocabulary in here to suit you best and take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. But what is coming through here around this impact, around what is unfurling here and unfolding for group three? What advice is coming through for group three? Goodness, I feel like I've been talking like 10 million miles per hour. So let's see what we got here. Okay, we have the Angel of Courage beautiful it says my heart is open and full of courage oh my we're gonna read through the rest of this but you're welcome to read on your own as well but um here is the image and it's showcasing more of those mountains in the distance mountains in the sky the humpback whale we had a lot of mountains showing up here as well in that page of of voices so there is something showing up in mountains and almost having their influence help you uh move through the hurdles of these mountains that are in your path um, but it says here, the angel of courage, my heart is open and full of courage, courage, an action that springs from the heart, which I believe if you actually look up the, the, um, like origins of the word courage, I think core 
is I think French or, or something like that from for the word heart. So it's about literally putting your heart to something and um, springing that action forward from your heart. So yeah, an action that springs from the heart, an action inspired by a center of true love brings with itself security and firmness that cannot be disturbed. To be courageous is to know that fear offers no resistance to love beautiful message to end on here with you guys you definitely have a lot of positivity coming in here or optimism rather for the impact that you're making in others lives definitely don't underestimate the impact that you're making in other people's lives putting a smile on other people's faces those small little gestures those small things that you do just being yourself singing your own personal song is something to be treasured and to be appreciated and I just want you to know that but also that um, through that others are also influencing and impacting you and it's important to to kind of thread those all together to create what it is that you're trying to put into the world right now because it definitely seems like you have a lot of ideas and inspiration right now to work with so use that heart space to to move you forward so I do hope you enjoyed this reading. If you did, be sure to give this video a like and you can let me know in the comments down below how it resonated for you. Both of those really help with the algorithm, but also your feedback down below is really helpful for me to know if you're enjoying these readings. If there's other things that you'd like to see or anything like that, do let me know as well. Um, I do put out new readings on this channel every single Monday for not only readings, but I want to bring out more educational videos. So if there's things you want to know, like how to create your own deck or how to work more with charms, I already have a couple of uh, videos on that, but we can look even further into other things. So do let me know. Uh, and you're welcome to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already to this little community on this little space of the internet. Um, I really do appreciate you being here every single Monday for these readings for your own empowerment and self-growth. So if you're interested in more of these readings and educational videos, do feel free to subscribe. And if you'd like to support this channel even further to help continue to keep it running here, I really do appreciate anything that comes through with the Kindred Tip Jar. It all goes back into the channel, so I appreciate that. And you can also check out the 2023 crazy that it's already 2023, right? Uh, 2023 New Year's readings uh, that are both digital and snail mail readings. So I talk a lot about my snail mail readings here, but I don't typically do digital readings. So if you're interested in a lower price and something that might be more accessible for you, especially those outside of the U.S., then do feel free to check those all out down below for a full giant tarot scope on your new year. So with that all said... Thank you so much for being here with me today. I hope you got something from this and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.